Welcome back to DataCube's free online um, BI training. Today we are continuing on our tablet journey. Today is episode 27 and we're going to be talking about some sort of formatting top tips um, across your workbook and sort of just general viz top tips and formatting and sort of dashboard, sort of touching on dashboard design. So we're back in Tableau, as mentioned, and I've just taken some of the sheets that we created from earlier and um, previous sessions, and I've created this really simple dashboard. Now it's just three different charts, and I don't really mean anything in terms of this isn't a this isn't like a board report. We're not going to drive any meaning from this because it comes from two very disparate data sets that don't really mean anything. Um, so you wouldn't uh, build this as a dashboard. <clears throat> However, in terms of formatting, um, there's some really key top tips and almost sort of dashboard design tips that we can apply to this to sort of help transform our dashboard from what it is right now into something a little bit more powerful, engaging, um, a way of understanding the data a bit quicker to help whoever views this, um, if it were to be meaningful data, to make those um, meaningful business decisions quicker and um, better. So the first thing I want to talk about is less about dashboard design and just a sort of casual Tableau trick. Um, this is something that quite a lot of people don't realize for a while, um, especially with the kind of fonts. What you can actually do is be able to edit everything at the same time on some sort of basic, on a basic level. So if we go to format um, and dashboard, we can apply change to this dashboard, but we can actually click workbook here. And this will apply um, rules, which is mainly around font, <coughs> um, to all your sheets, dashboards, and storyboards that you've got open. So for example, if you as a brand had a particular font, just say that was Arial, you could apply that in here to every um, sheet, dashboard, story, as I mentioned. And you can create those sort of consistencies by setting um, your font to be consistent across all of them by just applying some basic um, outlines here. So what I'm doing, if, for example, is um, using Arial throughout, creating a worksheet uh, font size of 10. Um, I just did the worksheet titles 12 because they were absolutely matching dashboard tiles. Uh, we're not really going to be using those today, but let's make them 16. And the same for stories. Now, I've got a really good um, website, which I'll put in the uh, description of this video, which will help um, with those sort of font sizing. Say, if my body is 10, what should the title be? What size font? Um, sort of that scale. So I'll pop that in the video description. Um, so that you can have a play around that because it really helps coordinate. Uh, you can also do things like grid lines, say the thickness of these on all the charts, this is really useful. So we might want this quite thin and grey it down a bit. Um, or turn them off, like whatever your kind of preference is. I quite like really subtle grid lines on mine. Um, and obviously you could change the colour of those to an actual colour if you really wanted to. but. It's more of a distraction than anything in my mind. So I'd keep those uh, nice and simple. There's some more things here, so zero lines. So I've seen quite a lot of people like um, quite a big uh, weighted zero line on their charts, this kind of thing, um, to kind of offset the bottom or the size on this case. Not so much for fan personally, I think kind of keep these things subtle is always the best way to go about it. Um, so you can change these things, reference lines, drop lines, access rulers, um, tick marks, and reset to default at the bottom. So that's something that's quite a good um, tip just to make sure you're using consistent um, fonts and font sizes across all of the things that you're making. So you don't have error on one side, tableau on another, and you have those conflicting styles. So that's my first tip is to use the format workbook um, and set these 
at the start when you start creating so you have that consistency which is really key the second thing I'd like to speak about is the use of the color black and that's as a general rule not a rule a guideline across everything not just fonts that we've spoken about but charts axes um, chart elements uh, coloring within chart elements um, black isn't technically is not a color um, it's very harsh and it can create high levels of contrast I would opt for something like a gray uh, hex code 6666666888888 that kind of um, color can be a lot more powerful so here I've got 66666 and it, that's what it's preset to um, and it's just a lot nicer than using a complete black so if we flip between the two just makes it so much easier to read and much less harsh on the eye than using raw black so that's my first tip the second one is let's think about chart elements um, and if you need everything so for example let's take this uh, top health life chart we've got here so <clears throat> if we go back to the chart the sheet that creates the chart we can see what we're making so we've got our different countries our regions um, our overall rank score our sum of freedom sum of social support and we put some filters on these and they've been colored by their individual um, ranks so this is overall rank so it's colored by that freedom by freedom social by social okay so we know what they're doing now we've got axis labels on this chart we've got the three the four the six seven and we've also got a an axis here as well with the title and it, you have to question whether you need all these elements um, so something I would consider if you want to use actual um, labels on your charts then perhaps you don't need your axes so what you can do is remove that um, or remove the title if you already had a title for that somewhere else or remove the actual um, labels from your charts themselves so the three the four the six seven eight um, just because of the sheer clutter and just seeing everything twice like do I really need to see that that's 13 on this axis is when I know that's 13 that kind of thing so what I'd recommend doing on these charts is to edit the axis and remove the major tick marks from um, that um, element of the chart and the same for these ones here so we can do that like this and then we'll kind of need those titles to understand um, what each of these mean but it just gives us a little bit more space and a little bit less clutter um, to have those duplicates on there so that already looks a bit cleaner next thing is thinking about um, color size impact so the point in a bar chart is that it automatically tells you um, which is bigger which is worse for example so overall rank Norway is at the top of this list because it's third Iceland fourth sixth all the way down to Singapore and 34th do we really need to have uh, size or even color um, to these charts when that's exactly what a bar chart does so do we really need the width on there and the color on the chart at all <clears throat> so I'd say no um, at least the differentiation you could have a color which might be part of your color palette so just say ours was uh, blue today then perhaps you need that but really think about do I need that gradient do I need the size change um, to distinguish between or do the bars themselves actually suffice so this is actually going back and just making things simpler um, just to reduce that kind of what's called cognitive load so the amount um, your brain can really take in at any kind of given point so here we've got 
these um, labels on and it's telling us exactly, the bars are really telling us what we need to know. Um, <clears throat> and so it just looks a lot cleaner. So the next thing we could do is think about maybe these titles. So make sure when you're building these visualizations that you're thinking about your final output. So if you're making that chart um, that we were just looking at here, it looks great on a sheet, but it's absolutely massive. So you've got to think about um, how things are going to look when they're kind of scaled down to the dashboard level. So for example, freedom to make life choices. Um, you might want to rename that to something more appropriate. So whether that just be freedom, in this case, that works fine. So we might want to call that overall rank. We could even just call this rank because it's the only ranking item. The other ones are all scores. <clears throat> and then social support. We might, in this instance, just want to call this support. So we now have one word for each and it just fits much better in here. So let's uh, move on to another one and apply the same logic. So we've realized we don't need duplications of the um, axis labels and the, um, the chart tick marks here. So we need to turn those off. We realize we don't need overall rank. We can just use rank. So let's keep that for consistency. We know we don't need our new fancy color palette as well as the size, as well as the text. Um, so we can get rid of these two. Um, we might want to keep the same consistent color. And it's just looking a lot cleaner already. <clears throat> Um, and then for the line chart, we might want to do a similar sort of thing. So we might go to sheet, we might say, well, we know this is the forecast that we looked at last week. So perhaps we don't need our fancy future um, distribution band that we added in. So we might want to get rid of that. We might want to keep our orange lines because it's nice and simple. Um, and if this loads, <laughs> being a bit slow, isn't it? I'll come back to that. Um, our chart axes, day of date, January 20. That's because of the forecast. Let's put that on there. So it's just thinking about all these different things. Um, Let's think about the color for consistency. We had a slightly lighter blue. Um, and it's just going to make it look a bit cleaner, try and reduce that cognitive load. Um, on this one, as a date, um, we might want to remove that header entirely um, just because we know from the forecast the dates that we're looking at here, and we can do it on the hover. <coughs> So it's starting to look clean. I'm just kind of emptying um, the the dashboard a bit, if that makes sense. Trying to line everything up so we're in nice grids, columns, equal sort of proportions on the dashboard. And the last tip or trick I want to touch on today, in this kind of overview of these, is to really think about white space or negative space, as it's appropriately called. So in Tableau, whenever we add anything in, it, try, it puts it into this grid system. Now this can be really handy um, to keep things in alignment, keep things on the kind of a grid. But it does try and use up all the dashboard, where white space and negative space is actually really impactful. So <clears throat> something you can do to that is to float um, your tiles or your chart or your dashboard elements so that you can size them to the size that they need to be and also to have sort of space around the edge to let um, all your sort of chart elements actually breathe. So instead of putting them right up to the boundaries, we can just bring them in a little bit and just give them a bit more space and um, a gap in between 
so that we can actually we're not sort of overloaded and we keep that cognitive load as low as possible and you'll see by just doing this and we kind of got to make sure everything's still lined up which is where it's not the best in Tableau, it's not the easiest to do so for example I'm trying to match up the bottom of these charts here that's pretty good but not perfect and you can see if I were to format these grid lines <clears throat> it would make everything a lot neater so that would be my next job so we can go to that sheet we can format this and we can start formatting all of the um, outsides of all our charts to remove um, <clears throat> everything that we need to remove in order to get these to match with our other charts. So to do that in this example we can get rid of our row dividers for the headers, um, our columns, so you'll see those disappear. Oh, that one didn't work. There we go. So now they've disappeared from the top of the sides. So when we go back to our dashboard, kind of just sits back into the uh, dashboard as we as we know it, as the background of, of it. So I guess what we've done really is just speak about consistency more than anything. Um, thinking, do I really need all the impact that I'm adding? Do I need to have size? Do I need to have color? Do I need to have text? All on the same thing to signify the same the same thing. <clears throat> do I need all those titles, those borders? That's something we haven't really touched with these titles to the chart. Again, question, do you need them? What do they bring? In this case, we kind of do. Um, this one doesn't really tell us anything. Um, so we'd need to format that to uh, something that's a bit more meaningful. The same with this one, top 10 happiest countries. That gives us that, has the rank. Um, line chart analytics tells us absolutely nothing. And uh, what I'd recommend is um, with titles is not just um, say what it is but you can actually use it for insight. So instead of just the sheet name, this could be um, sales volume, sale volumes predicted to continue in rise or something like that. So instead of being a boring title, it actually delivers the insight from the chart itself. Um, so we've spoken about that and then we finally touched on uh, white space, negative space, letting the chart breathe, reducing that cognitive load. So instead of all these things coming out, you can put your attention to what really matters and which will inevitably allow your directors or your, whoever the reviewers of the reports are to make the decisions faster by seeing the insight quicker. and in turn then driving the correct business decisions. So I hope you like this one today. Um, tune in next week for continued Tableau themed episode. Um, so see you then, thank you very much.